What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we've got our first guest of the podcast. I'm happy to welcome Mr. Josh Reddick. Woo-hoo. How you doing? I'm doing great, fellas. What's up? What's up? So, uh, Josh is a MLB player. He's been playing since, what is it, 09? Yeah, pr- professionally since 07, but uh, major leagues from parts of 09 and parts of 10 all the way until uh, 2021. So you were drafted by the Red Sox. Yep. And uh, you moved around to several different teams over the years. Uh, have you have you had any injuries? I wanted to ask about that. <laughs> yeah, right out of the gate. Love it. Um, yeah, so drafted by Boston <laughs> in, in 2006. And yeah, I've spent my time with the Oakland A's. I got traded to the A's and then got traded briefly to the Dodgers and signed with Houston. And then I played for the Arizona Diamondbacks for about two and a half months in 2021. But yes, I have. I've had um, probably, let's see, gosh, I mean, quite a few. I mean, nothing too, too major, knock on wood. Um, <laughs> but let's see. So, I mean, I strained my my right oblique in 08 in the minors. Um, that was about six and a half weeks before I came back. Oh. Yeah, not good. Felt like somebody stabbed me with a knife right in my side. Yeah, dang. Yeah, it didn't feel very good. And then, let's see, I was good that year, good that year. Um, 2013 was probably my first big one. I ran into a wall here in Houston, actually, before they put up padding, and it was a bunch of steel, um, like, like, not cables, not wire, but like cable bars, like little circle cable bars, and I was full speed, and... Um, first thing to hit was my hands luckily so I had to I played through a torn tendon in my wrist and had off season surgery to repair it oh dang yeah dumb move should have had surgery and then rehab and then came back at the end of the year because it cost me a good season but you live you learn yeah and then 14 I was good or actually 14 I had a minor knee issue I was having some um, patella issues my patella tendon was acting up and I had to wear like a big I looked like a lineman brace under my pants, so you could see the outline of my my brace, but oh, yeah. it didn't. Um, it allowed it allowed me to not hyperextend my knee, which is what was causing the pain. So okay, um, had that fixed, and then 2015, I actually hurt my. I pulled my left oblique in the second day of spring training. Oh god! So that was that oh. was pretty upsetting. Yeah, that was pretty frustrating. Missed all of spring training. Luckily, only missed <clears throat> only missed five games to start the season. And in 16, I broke my thumb stealing a base. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't my fault, though. Stealing and had the bag stolen easily, and the catcher should have never threw the ball, and he threw it up the line. And right. The guy stayed in, the guy stayed in there too long, and right as I was, I was diving head first, he jumped out of the way, and I hit his – actually hit his spike, not his cleat, the metal spike that hangs underneath the shoe. With the, very ed- with the very edge of my thumb, and it ripped it back. And, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It, it was a two-centimeter-inch, like, fracture. It wasn't even a break. It was like a fracture. It a fracture than a break. But, like, two- to three-centimeter fracture and cost me to miss, like, five weeks, six weeks. So he, he stepped on it, or you, you just caught no, it? No, I hit it. I hit it. When my hand hit the ground, uh, okay. my, left, my left thumb literally hit his back spike as he was jumping out of the way. Wow. Oh, wow. So I didn't even hit the shoe part. I hit the metal, little, like, three-by-three-centimeter three piece of metal that you use for the spike. True. Jeez. So, yeah. And that was that was a good year because it was my free agent year. And that's when I got traded away. So <clears throat> it didn't really matter. Yeah. So that was be- right before you went to the Astros, right? Yeah, that was um, mid-season of Oakland, probably mid-May. And then I came back with about a month left before the trade deadline and got traded. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then um, my first year in Houston, towards the end of the year, like towards September, <clears throat> I was having some major back issues, ironically. It was crazy because I was bending over to put on my boots, of all things. I was putting on my <laughs> boots in the hotel, and my back locked up. Oh. And I couldn't play for like five days. I ended up having to get an epidural because it was right before playoffs, and I had to make sure it was okay. So I had full-on like epidural given to me my, for my back pain. and Yeah, I've... I've I've known several people that have to have those a lot, and they say they're not very pleasant. <laughs> um, I got my I went I went to sleep for mine, so I don't know what, exactly what happened. Ah, okay, gotcha. Needle stuck in me very far, but I didn't feel a thing. 
Nice. So I got lucky. Yeah, I always opt to be put to sleep for a thing. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what we do on this podcast. We start with the gruesome stuff, you know, the hey. injuries, the everything else. It do me, it do me a loop for a loop there, but hey, I like it. So, uh, I, you know, switch it up from the same old standard boring stuff. How many times have you gotten hurt? <laughs> right? Oh, God, I didn't even think that was even going to be brought up. But like now we look at it, it's like, Jesus, seven or eight times. <laughs> Luckily, nothing, nothing too major. <laughs> on that on that same note like uh, just i guess more detailed question on the injuries like how does that feel when you are injured and you can't play like uh i mean it sounded like from from what you said it wasn't anything insanely like it wasn't anything major like maybe uh like career ending you know but like how does that feel when you're kind of out of commission and you're not able to do the thing that you're supposed to oh it sucks it sucks bad man just because, you know, when you're rehabbing at the field, you got you have to get there like noon to get all your stuff done for rehab before the team gets there and the guys who actually have to play oh, yeah. get their work done, you know. So you're you're done by like, you know, depending on what your program is, you're done by around 4 or 5, four or five o'clock for a 7 o'clock game. And then you stay and watch the 7 o'clock game, which usually, you know, averages about three hours. Some can go longer. So you're there from probably noon till about 11 so you're almost, you know, you're pretty much having a long 11-hour day of doing limited things, and all you're doing is watching your teammates play. It sucks, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Early on, I think it's easier to cope with because you, um, you know, that's when you obviously can't do anything for a few days because you're just stuck waiting for some kind of program, and, you know, you're getting over the anger issues. And then once you're probably, like, midway through your rehab, it becomes more of a routine. I guess you can yeah. deal with it better because you've gotten used to it. Mm. And then at the end, you get that that anxiety that comes out and the fire. Yeah, I was gonna say. I bet towards the end of recovery, you're like, okay, I can I can do this now because it's the light. The light yeah. is there. Yeah, the you end. get yeah, you see that light, and you're like, no, I, I can go in three days, not five days. Yeah. Going talking about like um, you moving teams uh, frequently, like throughout the years, like uh, how's moving around a lot like uh, Ben have you gotten to like really enjoy the places that you've gone or has it been more like a kind of go here and come back kind of deal um there's been some cool places I mean there's been some not so great places too um oh yeah <laughs> but I mean I mean well that that's one of the you know that's one of the grinds you have to live with as a minor leaguer and a lot of kids don't understand that and don't have the the mindset for that because you know at least now it's better now because now they have a union. Now they're getting paid more. Like when I first started, if you didn't sign a big signing bonus, mm -hmm. you were, you were screwed. Cause I mean, my, in, in low A and single A, you know, you make, I made eight, I think it was 800, 850 a month. Wow. Uh, playing pro That's ball. Crazy. So I, and, and my rent was 400 cause we, we were in Greenville, South Carolina. So we weren't in like a very bad right. city. That was, that was one of my favorite oh, cities. Yeah of all times greenville's a fun place and um I, I was just living in in Asheville, north carolina last year oh that's a gorgeous place too <laughs> um but yeah i mean and then, and then you go like from the next so the next year in 09 was i was in in still in single a but it was high a and mm -hmm. it was in a place called lancaster california <laughs> no, I doubt either anybody. If anybody's heard of that, I give you. I give and the you, crowd you. goes wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 a it's in the middle of the desert. There's nothing there, and um, the same there. I think I was making nine hundred a month there, and four fifty was rent. Only thing good to come out of there though is where that's where I met my wife. Oh, nice. And she, oh. And, and, and and she she she's a normal person. Just so we know, she's not like a, she's not like a, a desert hills have eyes kind of. Yeah, I was, about, I was about to say you met her. Yeah. That conclusion, yeah. I know I spoke bad about it, but that, that's that's where I met my wife, and she's obviously she's not from there. She's from about an hour away, from there. Okay. um, just outside of Palmdale. So that's the one good thing about going there, and then um, more. I went to Portland, Maine. If you've ever been, I've never been to Portland, Maine. I highly recommend it. Um, gorgeous city when it's not freezing. Obviously, you don't want to go in the winter. Right. Go, go in the summertime. Um, a lot of downtown has a lot of good things to see. A lot of good bars to hop, um, if that's your thing. I've got a buddy that lives in Portland, Maine, and I always make fun of him. And, and like, if I'm around other people, I'll, I'll introduce him and I'll say that he's from Oregon. 
And he'll be like, I'm, I'm not there. from Oregon. I'm like, well, you said Portland. <laughs> I just, I always do that. Oh, next time you talk to him, ask him how many sea dog biscuits does he eat a year. <laughs> okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a, it's like an ice cream cookie sandwich at the ballpark. Those things are so delicious. That sounds great. Yeah, it's fantastic. And then AAA was in, it's not there anymore, but it's in Pawtucket. It was in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. I love Pawtucket. Pawtucket, Providence area. That's the uh, that's the beer uh, Peter drinks on Family Guy, Pawtucket Patriot. <laughs> exactly. That's oh, the one. Yeah. Yep, that's the one. So that, that's another great place. And then obviously Boston is Boston. If anybody's ever been to Boston, it's they're diehard about everything. They're sports teams. Yeah, absolutely. They, they love us. They love players. They don't care. They don't care if you're going to – I was I was a 24-year-old rookie, and I was going out to lunch and dinners, and the managers were coming out and thanking me for, the, like, the game, and I didn't even do anything that night. And <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't paying for dinner. I wasn't paying for – it was fantastic. Oh, yeah, that had to be, like, totally life-changing, being, like – well, you were probably, like, 19 when you started doing, like, you know – I got drafted stuff. at 19, yeah. Yeah, like that had to be totally life changing at nineteen. Because I know at night when I was nineteen, I was still like, you know, <laughs> I was still like totally in this like kid mindset for myself, you know. Oh, for sure, for sure. I had to do a lot of growing up because I wasn't, you know, the most mature kid for my age either. So, oh yeah, um, being out on my own with guys my age and having to, you know, fend for yourself and mm-hmm. it was de- it was definitely a huge adjustment. Definitely a huge adjustment, but like I said, you got to have the drive for it and the mindset because it's not about just glorious days about sleeping in and going to the ballpark every day and making millions of dollars. You know, the grind is the oh, grind. Yeah. And, um, and then once you get to the big leagues, it's still not a grind, you know. Back when, I, back when I was coming up, they say it was easy to get to the big leagues, and in retrospect, it kind of was, but the hardest part was staying there. Oh yeah. yeah. To perform because okay. if you didn't perform, they they get your ass out of there. If you didn't perform, they didn't care. Your ass is gone. Right. Um, whereas nowadays, after since after COVID hit, and I've been a big victim of this because I'm an older baseball player, but all these young kids you see now who can't hit get this opportunity to play because all these teams are claiming so much money lost from the COVID season. All right. From no from from no fans, and you know there was no minor league season that year, so. They're like, we got to get our guys up here. And you see these guys that just absolutely stuck right. and should be in AAA. And then yeah. you have, you know, and I can say about myself, but it's not just me. And there's probably about 30 other players who are pretty much forced to retire because a lot of teams are going that way. A lot of good players that could have easily done better than all of those guys for, you know, maybe double the money because these kids are making $700,000 a year. You yeah. give somebody like that or somebody like me, like a, you know, a one point, like a, Hell, I'd have played for a million dollars last year. I'd played for the league minimum, which is seven hundred thousand. I didn't care. I love baseball too much to care about the money. I made that money. I don't need it. Yeah. All right. But I just wanted to play, and these kids are just up there absolutely sucking, and they're getting paid the same. And guys like us have to sit at home and watch them suck, and wonder why we 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 can still do it, but we can't get the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. That that that's kind of going back to like the question about the injuries, like how you how you feel when you're out, like how. Uh, how are you treated when you're like in the actual pros um, and like not AAA, not minor leagues? Like, how do they treat injured players? Like, do you get the sense that they are really dedicated to like rehabbing you, or or is it more like you're, oh, you're yeah. just, am I on oh, your yeah. own? Or? I think in the minors, I think, you know, I'd be lying if I said it, it varies from who you are, to be honest, because there's only usually one trainer per team yeah. with a team full of 26 guys and. Um, but like, if you're a prospect, a big name prospect who they gave a lot of money to, they'll make, they'll let him take more days off for like nicks and bangs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Whereas yeah, I like say for myself, I wasn't a big bonus baby. I didn't get signed for big money would play through so much pain and just from nagging injuries and playing for so much that they gave those guys off because they're just going to give him the opportunity because they gave him that money. They're an investment. That's all yeah, they are. Right. They're an investment to them. I'm I'm a lesser investment. And if I work out, they obviously win more. So, mm-hmm. um, but it varies. But once you get to the show, once you get to the big leagues, man, everybody's pretty much, you know, taken care of to the hundred and tenth percent. Okay. Um. Now there now they're, there's there's another fall in line there, but it's not like you're getting mistreated from somebody else. So like say, when I was hurt with Houston and I wasn't playing, like I had a, I think I had a concussion. I was on the concussion DL for like seven days. 
Um, I don't know if y'all know who Justin Verlander is. Mm-hmm. Um, big name guy, big veteran. If he comes in and technically wants my the table that I'm on, getting treatment or doing work, he'll come up and tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, Red, I want this table. And me, being the old school guy with a guy with a veteran like that, I'd be like, oh, yeah, no problem, but I'll go over here. Mm-hmm. I'll go to a different table because that's just how it works. And now it doesn't really fall like that. It's just huh. the veterans don't really have that com- that commander like feel anymore just because of the way baseball is going. Um, yeah. it, it's still there. Guys, like I think, you know, obviously Houston respects that a lot too, but the kind of stuff I'm talking about is like, you see these, these guys, these rookies that are hitting the base, you know, hitting homers and they're pimping the absolute crap out of them. <laughs> bat throwing their bat in the 20 feet in the air. Yeah. And they've got like six career homers. If I'd have done that on my like fifth career homer, the pitcher <laughs> wouldn't have let me run the bases. <laughs> because I, I, that's how it was. I came up in old school baseball. Like if you pimped a homer, hell, if you're a veteran and you pimped a homer, you got thrown at the next at bat. That's just how baseball oh, worked. Now, now you do that yeah. and you're getting ejected and everybody's crying and it's just the game's gotten a little bit soft in my opinion. Yeah, I can understand that. That's interesting, man, because you've had a great career in the MLB. You know, you won the gold glove in 2012 and you're a World Series champion since 2017. Was being drafted in the MLB always your dream, like since you started playing? And if so, what motivated you to keep that mentality to succeed and improve? Oh, absolutely. Dream since I was, you know, the four-year-old kid in the backyard. Every little boy's dream. I want to be on TV and play for... The Atlanta Braves. I'm a Georgia boy, so yeah. Braves are my team. I think I want to play for the Braves. I want to play for the Braves. So, I mean, it's – and you hear that about every kid, and as you grow up, everybody's like, well, what are you going to do as a backup plan? What's your fallback plan? <laughs> and I was like, there's not one. I'm going to play in the show. Like, be a baseball player is what I'm going to do. Um, so, my parents gave me every opportunity I could to play, you know, travel ball and spent the money to get me where I needed to be and – all that kind of crazy stuff. But, you know, I think I finally started realizing that I had a really good shot around like 17 years old. Yeah. To, to at least get drafted. Um, hmm. And then when I went to college, I realized how much better I was than everybody, to be honest. I was, I'll <laughs> yeah. be straight up with you. I was, I was a cocky, we were, I mean, I was a very cocky kid at that age because I was, I was better than everybody and I knew it. But I backed it up. <laughs> I was so gonna ask that. Do? I was like, how, "What was the what was the skill gap like in high school yeah. and, and then early college? Like, what was? Did you feel uh, it considerably? Oh yeah, oh yeah. In high school, for high school and college, for sure. Um, I mean, the best two players in our in our region in high school were on my team. It was me and our um, center fielder, number one pitcher. He and I were the number one and two players in the like within a two hundred mile radius. Mm. Um, oh, wow. It, it, at least that. Um, but, yeah, so it wasn't that hard because, you know, with him on the mound, it was pretty much an easy win, and we hit one, two, we hit two and three. We hit right behind each other. So oh, okay. we were on base a lot. But in college, you know, college I had a little bit of a feeler. It was a little bit step up when I started realizing that I was a much better hitter than everybody else because everybody was just going like one for four every game, one for five. And I was on base like three times a game, getting like two or three hits a day. And Oh, dang. Yeah, it was yeah. – yeah, it was college, college. I mean, I went to junior college. I wasn't in a big four-year school, but, you know, junior colleges back in the day were pretty good for baseball. And um, and then when I got when I got drafted, I, I got the the punch in the gut where you're like, oh, yeah, these guys are just as good or better than you, Josh. Uh-huh. Right? Something other than just, you know, rely on doing what you need to do. You need to go ahead and work your ass off a little bit more and take that next step. And that's what I did when I took that step. Um. Like I said, I wasn't a high draft pick. So there was three outfielders that got drafted before me. So they were going to get every opportunity, and I didn't get to start the season on time because I went to what we called extended spring training, and these other guys went to low way. But when I got up there, I got up there, and I, I didn't stop. I hit, and I took all, all their jobs, and they never passed me for the next two years until I got to the big leagues. Wow. I mean, I, so, I guess that's what it takes. I showed her. I showed her, man. But yeah, I, I realized that you're gonna have, you, 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 you have to, you know, you have to hit the gym. You have to Absolutely. get your cardio. You just, there's so much outside of just showing up and playing baseball that people don't realize. Like my biggest thing is 
I'd always, after every game since 2008, I would get in the cold tub. So the cold whirlpool was like 55, mm-hmm. 60 yeah. degree ice water for like five, 10 minutes every game. You get in the hot, warm the body up even more after the game, throw it right in the cold, shock the body, and get the tingle feel and numb it up, get out, shower, go home. Okay. Let the body let the body shut itself down because for the people that don't know what that does, that compresses your – it makes your blood flow harder to get to everywhere where it needs to be mm-hmm. because you're stocking the body so everything shrinks. And then as it slowly starts to come back to feeling, those those – veins open back up and that's obviously how you get the healing process is you get flesh fresher blood flow in there so that was always my natural way of just coming back and i think that really helped my career from not being majorly injured okay for the for the best part so like an ice bath right yeah it's all it is is an ice bath sucks every time sucks every time Yeah, man, it's got to suck. I mean, it's freezing. But you know what interests me? Like you said uh, that when you were younger, you had that like cocky mentality. And that's so interesting to me because I don't know if you guys have seen the Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix, but we all know like how cocky he is. Yeah. And he's a great athlete. Like a lot of these amazing athletes, like it's almost like being cocky is something that you need to have to succeed and become like a major, major athlete. What would you say? About it's that? a mindset. It's a mindset. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um you know, a lot of people look at it as cocky or, you know, D-bag-ish. Um, mm-hmm. But if that, you know, I've, I learned when I got to pro ball that if, this, if that's what you need to do to perform and help this team win and make you a better player, go for it. Right. Go for it. Because, they're, they're, you know, I've played with all kinds of people that, you know, can be huge D-bags whether they're doing good or not. And there's guys who are just absolute great guys smiling all the time whether they're hitting 200 or 400. It's, 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 you get your mix everywhere you go, but you know, there's a lot of guys like that. You know, Bregman, Alex Bregman is a guy that pops on my mind first off. He doesn't have his so called mojo swagger <laughs> and that, you know, Conor McGregor walk about him. He's yeah. not going to be the same player. That's just how he is. Yeah. Well, the, you know, there's a difference between, there's a difference between like being cocky and being like mega confident in yourself mm-hmm. and then just yeah. being cocky and wanting to showboat. Yeah. Well, if you want to be cocky and conceited, you better back it up because then nobody's going to say anything. Exactly. Right. As long as, if you yeah. back it up, nobody's going to say one word to you. Yep. Um, I was just going to ask, I was going to touch on like, uh, you said you were part of a couple of, I want to say, I remember you saying you were part of a, another international team before you were with like your current one because you're with uh, Australia uh, Heat right now, aren't you? Yeah, the Perth Heat. So yeah, I was, yes. um, I was playing down in Mexico. Okay, yeah, Mexico. Respect. That's where it was. Okay. Yeah, down in down in Mexico. A little Yeah, it's a Mexican league. It's like uh it's basically another triple A league for MLB because MLB is affiliated with them. So I went down there to just try to show that, hey, I know I can still do this. Let me show right. you I can still do this. And then after about a month of playing, it was pretty clear that I wasn't gonna get picked up. Mm. And it wasn't worth my family going through. You know, it wasn't a decision just for me. My family was down there with me. And right. as hard enough as it is to raise two-year-old boys. Anyway, twin boys, you know, raising them in a city, in a, in a, in a place like that. We were just so far away from everything. If we would have been closer to other cities, it would have been fine. But all the cities that we would go to travel to play were so far. It wasn't mm-hmm. worth it. So we came home and just enjoyed summer and traveled and went to our Hawaii house for about a month. And hung out <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah. That's, but yeah that's, that's great that's beautiful yeah we, we leave for australia in four days we're going on the 21st we're going to hawaii for a few days so the flight's not super long and then we're gonna hop on the big bird oh, about yeah. five, day, five days later so you ever been there before i have not no my wife has my wife studied abroad over there for a couple of years oh cool and has friends yeah. there and and she's yeah she's she knows the whole island so she can show me around and it'll be nice it's nice it's a nice paid vacation to play baseball is pretty much how I'm looking at it <laughs> right. we we only played three we only played Friday Saturday Sundays so the whole week will be that's perfect whatever we want to do as a family and yeah can't beat it man so how long are you planning on being out there then I'll be out there we'll be out there for probably like five or six months okay so you pretty much just have to move down there temporarily all together then oh yeah 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 
Yeah. Yeah, the team, the team got got us a place to stay, and oh, that's um, awesome. Ob- obviously, we pay rent, but it's you know they they set it up for us, and right. But yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. a good time. Oh man, it's I can't wait. <laughs> um, so being in the major leagues, uh, I'm sure you've been uh, in a couple of the video games. I was going to ask about that if you're aware of uh, if you're in them or if uh, how many you were in. I'm in them. I'm. I mean, I'm in them. <laughs> from, from from probably. I mean, probably from twenty. I mean, it will be the show's been around for years. Yeah. So probably, probably from 2009 till 2021. So Hell yeah, that's awesome. 10, 10, 11 years. Did you have to do like any lines? No, no, no. I'm not a superstar. They do that with the big name guys. Um, no, I did get royalties every year for it though. That was nice. Oh, that's. I was about to say, you should do you get like royalties and everything, and mm-hmm. like uh, that's got to be surreal being in a video game. Yeah, every every team does. Every player that's listed on there has their name, their license. It's called licensing, so they get their licensing checks. And yeah, the more the more you're in the show, the higher it gets every year. So I know that uh, when they were making NCAA football games, they had when they stopped, they had to stop making them, and I think 14 was the last yeah. one, and it was because of licensing names. issues with the players. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I wasn't sure, like, uh, what the. Um, what the deal was with that? If you if they had some sort of deal worked out with that or what? No, I think with the sh- I think with the show they have players all the way from Double A to the show. Okay, I, I I think people have been speculating about the college football stuff. Like now that they're able to make money, mm-hmm. so they changed all those rules. Like I wonder if they'll start to make NCAA games again. I would love that game to start coming back. They have a an act a pretty active community that updates the roster still. Um, if mm-hmm. you have a if you have it like modded or or anything, that's illegal. So that's pretty, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Uh, do you what, what kind of games do you yourself play? Do you still get to play a lot of games, or do you? Uh... No, man, I'm a dad. I don't get to play video games. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> probably I I miss them so much because it was so much a part of my life, and just with the baseball life, you know, just some traveling and mm-hmm. you know, me and the boys had the game mix cases and. Yeah. You know, I won't lie. We played Fortnite when it came out. You know, yeah. there's, our, whole, our whole team was linked to it. I mean, you know, it took over the whole sh- the whole league because we were playing with guys all over the show. And I'm sure it was just good because you know we'd play them after the games to like two in the morning, three in the morning. It was a good way to come down from a game. That's awesome. Um, I was never good at Call of Duty all the way back to God when it came out to now. <laughs> so I pass on those. I love Assassin's Creed and God of War. Nice. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for the new God of War to finally release. I'm tired of waiting. Good. Um, God, I was. So you're more into like adventure games. Sort of. I mean, Halo. I was. And Halo was huge for me in college. Um, college and like my first year of pro ball, we played Halo a lot. Oh yeah, Halo was massive around what that you, time. Period. What years were you in college? Just one. <laughs> Oh, oh, five, oh six. it was just oh five oh six. Okay, it was literally two, was literally two semesters. I got uh, like I got like sixteen credits, so I wouldn't even call it college. Um, I, I was just I was just wondering because was that the time? Would that have been like the golden eye days? Oh man, I'm not that old. Come on now. <laughs> I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> think of when it came out. It was the it was the first Xbox though. It wasn't the first Xbox. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it was just all the baseball team was on one dorm, so we could literally just yell at each other to play a big old lobby. <laughs> Classic. And that's what we did. And then Guitar Hero came out. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, the hours I spent on Guitar Hero and Rock Band, I could tell you. I still play <laughs> Guitar Hero. They have Clone Hero now for the PC. It's like you can upload your own music or download music people have put on. There. Uh, see, I've I been playing that guitar. for so many years. You can get it. At, get Guitar Hero guitars are getting hard to find. They're pricey now. I got them. Don't worry. Yeah. I still have mine. I have, I have. I have the drums, the microphone, the bass, That's the regular awesome. guitar, and a backup guitar. Don't worry. I'm nice. I'm set. You got the setup. Uh, yeah. You all you need is a uh, an adapter for your computer, and you can play that Clone Hero man. S- some pretty awesome stuff it's on always, there. Uh, it's always absolutely on his, on his flight to Perth. 
<laughs> it would be tough. I'm still trying to fight. I'm still trying to fight with my wife about taking my PlayStation in the games case. Because <laughs> like, if you're taking it, you got to carry it through the airport the whole time. I'm like, that, that, that's probably going to. It'll probably be, it's probably going to be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> look into uh, you should look into getting you a Steam Deck. Those just came out. Those are pretty. Uh, those are pretty good from what I've been seeing. What is that? It's a uh, like a mini handheld PC. It's like a Switch style almost, but it's like oh, okay. I got you. Got you. Got you. I don't even know. I think. Mean, I don't know. I got. I, think I, I don't have a Switch, but I think I got something. It might be something like that. I don't know. Like I said, I've I, I've got the the PSP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean if it shows you how much i don't play anymore I mean, i've got the, the new xbox and the new playstation and i've played both of them like three times so <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's disappointing looking at them because we have a movie theater and there's just hooked up in there i'm just sitting there looking at them watching coco melon and oh yeah <laughs> i'm like oh one day <laughs> one day so how much longer till the kids can start playing games um well, they just turned three, so. Ah, uh, you're getting there. It'll 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 show up, yeah. I mean, it's funny because like right now I dabble with I got MLB the show, just in one of our other our other rooms, and when they're playing around, I'll dabble and just mess around and play on a little bit, and they'll come grab the extra controller and watch me for like five minutes and push all the buttons and they'll run off. So. <laughs> like the it's thing a start. Up. It's a start. They're not ignoring it, so that's that's a start. Do you play yourself? I do not. I just do the I do the creative <laughs> player and uh, okay, so yeah, I, I create a player and make my way to the show. But no, I. Actually, <laughs> if you want to know, if you must know, the first time I ever played MLB the Show with me on it, I I did. I, I literally played it one time with the actual like exhibition game mode, and I came up with myself with the bases loaded to the first pitch grand slam. I turned the game <laughs> off. I'm never playing it ever again. <laughs> <laughs> so now oh, all I play is road. All I play is road to the show. I was like, it's, it was meant to be. I did that. I'm done. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, I was just going to ask, I follow you on Instagram, Josh, and sometimes I see, like, you upload some cool stuff, uh, like, you know, you're wearing a Spider-Man outfit or, or like, the Spider-Man bat. You strike me as a Spider-Man fan. Did you play the game? I did, yeah, I did. Um, I actually played it, gosh, when was that? I played. I always play my games late. I never play them when their release date is, so. Um, I think it was the off-season of 2019. We were up in, um, yeah, 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 because... We used to have a place up in the mountains in Colorado. That's where my wife was living for a while before we got back, before we got back together. Um, so she was a snowboarder. And so we were up there all, we were up there in the winter time and I don't, I couldn't snowboard because of baseball. So while she was out and the boys were napping and I was just playing Spider-Man the whole time. So I beat it probably within, <laughs> gosh, I probably beat that game within a week and a half. <laughs> loved it. Loved it. So I gotta ask you, who's who's your Spider-Man? Tobey Maguire, or you know the the British guy, what's his name? Tom Holland. Who's your like? Did you grow up watching Spider-Man, or you just you just like the idea of Spider-Man, or you just for the boys? Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> to- Tobey Maguire. The- yeah. My room was decked out. Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, growing up, like oh, everything. Wow. Yeah, I had a few. I had a few. I had a few of the posters in my. In my room as well. <laughs> it's classic. Yeah, my dad got me like the oh, like most of the original like comic run collection, mm-hmm. and like I've kept that put up very tightly for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got my share of, of comic book collections as well, so I'm pretty anxious to see where that that gets me in about forty fifty years. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fun fact: actually, um, I was able to meet Stan Lee. Really? Wow. Yeah, when I was when I was the Dodgers, it was funny because um they obviously they have plenty of celebrities that come out because of the Dodgers and like fifteen minutes where the game started, one of my teammates says, Hey Red, you catching the first pitch tonight? I'm like, No, why? He said, Well Stan Lee's out there. I said, you know, <laughs> get get the out. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. No, for real, man. He's out there right now. You should go. I'm like, seriously, I sprinted out there, man, because I always wear my Spider-Man undershirt under my jersey. I oh, have wow. for like <laughs> eight or nine years just because he was my favorite, and it's kind of my nickname. Mm-hmm. Um, but I ran out there and told him I wanted to catch it, and I went up right to him and started talking to him, introduced myself, and I showed him. I took my jersey off and showed him. <laughs> um, so wow. That was, a pretty, that, that was a pretty surreal moment. For, yeah, that was a pretty surreal moment for me. 
it was pretty funny because then you know if, if if everybody knew how big of a fan I was, they should have told me way before that, so I could have prepared myself. <laughs> yeah, I wore two undershirts. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's amazing. I would have I would have had a heart attack. <laughs> honestly, it it was it was pretty surreal. I've, I haven't really gotten. I don't really get too starstruck a whole lot. He was probably one of them, but I wouldn't say I was like fangirl speechless. Mm-hmm. All right. I the only time I've ever been that is when I met King Griffey Jr. Just because he was my hero. He was my favorite baseball player growing up, and oh yeah, all that stuff. So I was pretty pretty speechless when when I met him. That's amazing. So uh, have you have you gotten to meet like a lot of like very interesting people through you know being able to. Oh yeah, I mean, a lot of big baseball names. I've had, you know, I've met, I've met a few celebrities here and there, and um, my probably, probably my my wide stretch of people that I know that are probably more celebrity like are the wrestlers, the WWE wrestlers. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm sure y'all don't know the extent of my fandom before I got married about wrestling. <laughs> um, it was it was it was it was pretty hardcore. I was going to a lot of shows every off season and. That's um, I got in close because I was always I always use wrestling songs as my walk up music. Uh, yeah, and so Triple H was always my number one guy, my favorite. Mm-hmm. God, I used his song, and then one day I went to all the events because I knew a camera guy, one of the camera guys I'd met through a buddy, who would always give us tickets in like their family section, which is where the hard camera is, so you don't ever get camera time. But I didn't care; I just wanted to see the show. Yeah, and so one night I'm walking out in Boston. I'm in Boston for my wrist surgery in 2011. And the camera guy texts me. He goes, hey, man, I saw your Twitter page and saw you're in Boston. Are you coming to the show tomorrow? I go, what effing show? <laughs> He's like, dude, we're at the Garden. We got a show tomorrow, Monday Night Raw. I'm like, well, yeah, count me in. <laughs> and he's like, That's awesome. and, I, and, I, and it's just me. So I'm like, I'm just, I go there and I get to the will call and there's two tickets for me. I'm like, all right, cool. And I look at him and I'm like, section one, row one, seat seven. I'm like, no way. <laughs> okay. And I start walking down and I show the guards and like, oh yeah, you're down there behind the announce table. I'm like, <laughs> oh, right awesome. behind right behind Jerry the King Lawler and Jim Ross. Wow. Like right right there in the camera's face, man. Like couldn't believe it. That's camera terrible. guy comes up to he's like, some pretty cool seats, huh? You be getting hit with sweat. Yeah. And then oh. I go and then I and then I and I always went backstage after the show and just hung out with him and just like kinda you know, puppy dog followed him around because I wasn't going to be screwing up that opportunity. All right. Um, he's like, "Yeah, come back here. Somebody wants to meet you tonight." And sure enough, it was Triple H. And so I got, <laughs> and so I got to know him a little bit and talked to him for like thirty minutes. And he gave me his number and said, "If you ever need tickets, man, just call me. Give me a shout. Shoot me a text." I'm like, I literally looked at him. And I said, "Are you sure? Because I will abuse this privilege. hundred <laughs> percent will abuse." Like, nah, man, go ahead. I'm like, all right. So every year, me and a buddy would always like they always they were always in Atlanta, or like Nashville or Greenville or like within a four hour drive, yeah, of where where I lived, and um we'd always make the drive to go see him. And sure enough, every year I'd always text him like a month in advance too, just so he couldn't say I didn't hit let him know. I was like, hey man, me and a buddy coming, la la la. If you don't mind, yeah, cool. Every every time for like the next eight years, just That's seats in the front row seats at every show, man. Wow, eight years. That's that's crazy, yeah. <laughs> well the better the best part was, you know, the more I went, the more wrestlers I got to meet. Because no, yeah. eventually, eventually they just started giving me backstage passes to come before the show. <laughs> oh man. Oh, so that's Triple awesome. H yeah. Triple H would hook it hook it up and then he gave me his number of secure head 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 of security. I got his number. Wow. So he man. would walk me and my buddy into the back door. We'd have a parking space back there with him. Like we were a part of the crew, man. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Wow. I was about to ask, like, did any, did anybody ever think that you were a wrestler? Like, was there any any confusion? No, man. Look at, have you ever <laughs> seen these guys? <laughs> they probably would have, They probably thought I was just some camera guy, man. These uh-huh. guys are these guys are absolute massive. Humans. Maybe like a prop wrestler that you know the other wrestlers throw at each other. I wouldn't I even know, be. A, like I that. wouldn't even be a. Fill, I'm not even. I'm not big enough to be the lowest member on the car. There's no way. <laughs> they knew. They knew. Oh, man. But no, like, because I got more ballsy as I went, as I kept going, because they just left us in the food room and we'd eat their food and drinks. And <laughs> I look at my buddy, like, dude, come on, let's just go walk around. Like, what are they going to do? We have passes. 
Right. See, my buddies, my buddies, all nervous, dude. We can't do that. We can't. I think, come on, dude. Screw it. Let's go. So we just started walking around. Sure enough, nobody said a thing. Yeah. More more wrestlers came up and introduced themselves to me, just asking who I was. <laughs> and then slowly, word got around that I was there and who I was. And as the years went on, they started coming up and more of them were introducing themselves to me than me because I wasn't just going to be that fangirl that just jumped up to somebody and. Yeah. Hey man, Josh Redding, nice to see you. you know, hey John Cena, you know. <laughs> I wasn't gonna be that guy because I, you know, I I can respect their space. That's their space. You know, it's like when I get to the ballpark, and if a random fan or you know somebody was coming through like that, I wouldn't want them throwing me off my routine, so to speak. So yeah, right. yeah. Well, that's, that's how you lasted through eight years. Is you didn't you didn't irritate right. anybody, <laughs> and I didn't take any pictures. You do not pull your phone out to take pictures back there ever. Yeah. Okay. Until you tuck in a room. If you, if, oh no! In case of spoilers. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, true. Spoilers. I saw. I saw. I witnessed something. We were just standing there, man, and this guy snuck backstage somehow and had his phone out and tried to take a picture of Brock Lesnar. Ooh. And Brock wasn't announced to come out. Like Brock wasn't even supposed to be there. He was like a surprise return. And like six security officials ran over to him, took his phone, went straight wow. to general settings and reset that thing and then threw it in the trash and kicked him out. No wow. way. They reset I was like, his phone. Oh, yeah. I was like, shit. oh. I looked at him. I said, now we know. Wow. <laughs> I just threw a fit, man. Oh, yeah. my gosh. You don't take pictures. They know you. That's, you don't take pictures, man. That's uh, their day. They don't, they don't screw around. They don't screw around. Man, we have a lot of uh, wrestlers kind of live around that our area as well because we're just in Tennessee, not not far from you know South Carolina and all that. But um, we got uh, we got Ricky Morton from the Rock and Roll Train Express. He's got a <laughs> wrestling school down here. Excellent. Uh, we got uh, Kane. He's the mayor of Knoxville. He um, is the mayor. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I went. I went to school at at UT. I remember when he was running. Yeah, there were a lot of a lot of memes going around. Oh, oh, uh, uh, from what I understand, he's a really good mayor. Things I've read, he does a fantastic job. Yeah, and he's a great guy. I've met him. I've talked to him a couple of times. Really nice guy. That's Crazy, awesome. you play the most demonic bastard on the <laughs> show, and, you're, and it makes sense. You're the nicest guy on there, and and then you'll see, and then you'll meet the guys that are like absolute good guys on TV, and then you go backstage, and they're like the biggest douche, douchebags ever. You're like, uh, yeah, come on, bro. Like I was, I was relieved when I met Cena. Like Cena was a good guy. I was like, bro, you got to be a good guy. There's no way you can be an a hole. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about John Cena. Same. Yeah. Can we talk about Barstool real quick? Oh yeah, um, Barstool. They messaged me like, I want to say day before yesterday on my Instagram, and uh, they were like, hey. The thing is about it, they were kind of like just forward. They were not, they didn't seem like a polite message. They were just like, hey, we want to post this. Like, just fill this up. <laughs> like, I mean, they're probably like, oh, okay. else, else turn down bar stool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, you know, okay, I'll fill it out. And I filled it out. And then maybe a few hours later, they posted it. And then you, you were the first person to send it to me. I was actually waiting to see where it would go up and uh Sweet. you were actually the first person who sent it to me so <laughs> there you go. congrats on that man it's pretty cool yeah i've had a i got lad bible made a video with my impressions on it as well um and posted it on over on like facebook hell yeah that's a good big one too then yeah i've had a few people uh come to my channel from that i've got a few contacts through there as well absolutely that's how the grind goes yeah, I was gonna ask you. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you, what is like? Did, is there like a strict type of diet that you had to follow while you were playing in the MLB, or like, what are your restrictions, or like, what's uh, something that you had to avoid? Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> just per, just, that's just personal because my early minor league days, back to being when I was broke. You know, that all-star special for seven bucks. Was, oh, yeah. That thing was nice. After oh, the game. man. To go to. But, um, you know, obviously that's that's not the best fuel for your body to play 100-plus games. So right. it caught up with me early. We don't, we don't necessarily have to follow a diet because, you know, at the end of the day, you're a grown-ass man. You do what you got to do. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you want to be in better shape and obviously have your body ready, you better do something. So um, 
I learned that the hard way just by doing Waffle House and, you know, ramen and pizza pockets. <laughs> but then again, that's all I could afford. So when I started actually being able to afford some good meals, the, the, the gener- general chicken and rice and, you know, the bulking season and yeah. just making sure, making sure you get your protein and your carbs um, was big for us. So I just kind of tried to focus on that. Now, as the years gone on, now there's, you know, teams have dietitians and nutritionists that pretty much order all our food. Um, so the food in a lot of places has really fallen down in my opinion, because obviously for me, the better the food is for you, the worse it tastes. Cause you know, as you guys know, fried foods are everything. Right. Uh, um, but there's a few, there's still a few places that have like personal chefs that'll cook you whatever you want. And, um, those places I really like There's places like Houston, we had a chef, but he didn't cook everything. He only had a certain menu. Right. And then our, our nutritionist was very hardcore about, getting us all the stuff that didn't taste good. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's that. And, and, and I'll be honest, I wasn't the most healthy eater on the planet, but I was very blessed with a very high metabolism my whole mm-hmm. life. So um, I could pretty much eat what I want and go out and party. And, you know, my 20s, I, I went out a good bit and drank and, you know, nothing stupid to where I'd end up on, you know, TMZ. But I went oh. out and enjoyed my, I went out and enjoyed myself and, you know, did my thing in my twenties and ate what I wanted to and was able to recover pretty quickly. But as I got to, you know, my thirties, it kind of was relevant that I needed to slow that part down. Right. Yeah, I was about to say, is it, has it come around on you yet? Not yet. Fortunately, not yet. Um, <laughs> we'll see after this, this Australian league run, whatever, you know, I'm not as active as I have been for the last 20 plus years of my life. So, um, yeah. I'll still, I'll still work out. My kids will still keep me busy. So not like I'm going to sit back and go get 250. I'll just, I'll just keep yeah. sitting at around 200, 205, maybe. Yeah. It's not going to be sit like the dodgeball. No, no, not <laughs> at all. <laughs> so it, you said the last 20 years. So when, when did you actually start playing baseball? Like what's, when's the, like the 25th anniversary? See, I started playing when I was four. But, oh, okay. Um, so it's past. I mean, if, 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 you're, if, you're ta- if you're talking about since I started playing, yeah, we're looking at like almost, you know, we're at the 30 year mark. Um, wow. Yeah, that's, you know, 30, 30 years of just it's baseball all the time. 30 years. Crazy, man. Crazy. But it's good. It's let me travel the world, travel the country, and see places that I never thought I'd be able to see. Yeah. Um, and, you know. And, and they paid you for it. And they paid me. Exactly. And I met my wife because of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what, what was the timeline like before? You, you said you met her in uh, Lancaster or, or an hour an hour outside or whatever it was. <laughs> well, I met, her, uh, I met her in Lancaster, but she's, she didn't, she's not from there. But she's from Palmdale. But, um, okay. So what was like the timeline before you guys met? Like how long were you playing before like a, like a family was a thing? That was my so that was my second year in pro ball. We dated for probably two years, from '08 to like I don't know, probably like a year and a half. So '08 to like 2010, and that was right around the time where we both just you know wanted to do our own thing, and you know we were too young to we were both just we wanted to do our own thing and live our lives. And she, mm-hmm. went, you know, that's when she went and studied abroad, and I was just you know doing my baseball thing and focusing on getting to where I wanted to be and. You know, we stayed very close over the years. It's not like we, we ignored each other or didn't talk to each other. We stayed good friends, and the more and more we stayed good friends, the more and more we started to realize that, you know, we couldn't really be without each other. So we just fluctuated back to each other, and here we are. Aw. Yeah, we, need a, right. we need a soundboard so we can have, like, a big yeah. button. I'll edit, I'll <laughs> edit it in after. There you go. Aw. Aw. All right. So do, do, you, do you think that was, like, really beneficial for your – especially the beginning of your career or like oh, making yeah, that decision to, to kind of focus. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and she, she's always been very supportive of my career. So it's, um, she's, she's been, you know, pretty much my backbone and shoulder to lean on when baseball got hard and, you know, things got hard or family drama came around. So she was just always somebody that I could, I could talk to and whether she, we were dating or not, it was just easier, easy for us to do that. So, it's good that you've made it work out and uh, everything's working well with y'all because I know a lot of people, especially with busy lives like that, they, uh, they, they tend to 
have a lot of issues with uh scheduling you know so right and i see that you you always make sure to have your time allotted for your family and that's that's really really good oh gosh man it's outside of baseball it's the only thing i ever wanted was have a family and have kids so yeah. i just yeah. I, I don't i don't understand why people just don't want to be a parent I, i'll never understand it because i look at those two every day and those are everything that i want to i want to hang out with all day so there, there's nothing else yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. They they are very adorable. Uh, absolutely. They're. I see you post them on Instagram a lot. They're 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 awesome little dudes, man. Thank thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I, I mean, I don't I don't have any kids myself, of course. My but my sister has three three boys now. She just had her third last year, and uh, man, it's it's so funny to see like little kids. And how hilarious they are, like without even trying. <laughs> it makes you feel bad oh, as like as an adult who's trying to be funny, and they're they're just like miles funnier than you without even <laughs> yeah yeah making any attempts. Oh, but you have you have the whole other dynamic of having twins. That has to be. Oh yeah. Yeah, we went straight in. We we, we went we went straight into man to man coverage. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's you know there's I mean that's. It hasn't been easy. Having two of them has not been easy by any means. You know, it's yeah. obviously it, it it got easier. Probably when they got like to one or one and a half, two 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 years old, it got pretty yeah. pretty good to just kind of sit back and watch them do their own thing and not have to be at our hip all the time. Yeah. But you know, just just the fact of <clears throat> you know, I mean, they're completely opposites: looks, attitude, interests, <laughs> dislikes. Like they're completely different. Like. It's it's just brothers, man. Like if one just if one of them looks at him and says red, the other one's gonna look at him and say blue. Yeah. <laughs> just because like, it doesn't matter what it's about. He's gonna say yes or he's gonna say no. And like, hey, Ryder, do you want to go? Like, what do you want to watch today? Paw Patrol. Yeah, Maverick. What do you want to watch? Blaze. Why anything but Paw Patrol. Yeah. I, I can watch Paw, I'll watch Paw Patrol all day. <laughs> as long as long as it's not just, you know because Paw Patrol is bearable, but there, there's some out there that aren't. Nowhere yeah. near bearable. So you guys ever watch Bluey? Bluey. We uh, we actually we yeah. actually just floated back to Bluey. We watched it earlier <laughs> on, but now we've kind of been pushing it on them since we're going to Australia. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So, but they, they they love the episode called Keepy Yuppy. <laughs> Who does? That's doesn't? been their obsession. So. Let's go back to injuries. No. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to yeah. ask you though, like uh, on your honeymoon. Yeah. Follow you on Instagram. So like it's beautiful. All these pictures that you posted on your honeymoon. Like you went to Ireland, Paris, Greece, Italy, London, Berlin. Where did you have fun the most? Ooh, um we both really loved Ireland. I feel like we could have spent a week in Dublin alone. Um we stayed in a gorgeous castle right by the water. Um and they had all kinds of cool activities. We did the falcon hunting thing. Or falcon, yeah, falcons would fly from like 200 yards and land on our arms. Um, wow. We did like archery practice. They had these big ass dogs that were like special breed of Ireland that were like four feet tall that you could hang out with. The <laughs> castle just had so much to do. Um, <laughs> but those weren't dogs. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were fluffy enough to be dogs. So let's go with that. Um, it was actually that the one? prince's two sons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I really enjoyed Berlin. Um, you know the whole the whole honeymoon was a really big historic history tra- you know travel mm-hmm. chapter. Yeah. So um, that's what I liked about it. I think we both like just experiencing the history of everything. But if I had to guess, I would say that one. I would say Ireland for sure. Um, I think I'm pretty sure she liked Berlin as well. We just didn't have enough time to a lot of places. A lot of places we were only there for like a day and a half, and then we had to travel somewhere else. So, yeah. um, but there was places where you know, like like London, I could never, I could be happy and never go there ever again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just just because it's it's dirty. There's trash everywhere. It's just filthy. Yeah. <clears throat> Big Ben's <laughs> been under construction for like five years, so I couldn't even see Big Ben clearly. Oh man! Um, yeah. So, but cool thing was i got to go to the jack the ripper museum i was always interested with jack the ripper <laughs> that would be very interesting I, I've been... 
This week. Yeah. Josh the Ripper. Josh the Ripper. <laughs> I do have 50 acres. I could hide you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding I, I for everybody. <laughs> Well, Josh, I want to thank you for being on and being our first guest on the podcast. I really, really appreciate it and taking the time out of your day and being on and uh, listen to us all ramble and ask you silly stuff. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Happy and honored to be number one. But I have to have one thing, from uh, technically two things from you before I go. And it's yeah. uh, my two favorite lines that you do. I need a my, le- I need a my leg. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I need a plankton. Give me the formula crabs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And go. Give me the formula crabs. My leg. I hear my leg on, on your TikTok live. I will always <laughs> send a donation just so you're clear. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Yeah, man. I appreciate it, guys. I'm going to go wake up these kids. Absolutely. Have a good one, man. Yep. You too, guys. All right. See you, Josh. Thank you, brother. Thank you guys for listening to Croaked. All of our socials will be linked in the description, so be sure to check that out and give us all a follow, and be sure to tune in next time. We're going to have more special guests coming up soon, and plenty of more episodes to come. So thank you for watching, and see you next time.